Hello everyone. Today we're going to have a look at these two beautiful maps of South Africa. This is a travel map. National Geographic is us up here. And then we have a more detailed one of Cape Town and Peninsula. These were sent to me by a long-term subscriber who goes by Mitchell Explorer here on YouTube. And uh, he said he's going to travel to South Africa. So he would love to get a little overview of the country. So let's have a look at them. However, before we get into these, I thought we could have a more generalized look at where South Africa is. So I've brought the Universal Atlas. These Hölzer ones are the ones we usually get in school. But the one that I got you know, a long time ago, I don't think that it featured this kind of overview of the African continent. even if you aren't too well versed when it comes to geography. South Africa is easy to find. It's in the name. We have the African continent and South Africa is all the way down here at the southernmost tip. Modern humans first made it to the region. Here it says 120,000 years ago, but I've also seen 170,000 years ago, so either way, an incredibly long time. And it says here there's a border cave, so you can find a lot of cave paintings and traces of these early settlements in the area. When it comes to more recent history, we have an overview of the continent of around 1750. And we can see that here there's a Cape Colony and Cape Town, which is in Dutch hands and the Cape Colony is listed as British here. The name Cape of Good Hope actually goes back to Portuguese sailors from the 15th century. They first named it Cape of Storms because it's very windy in the area. It was then renamed Cape of Good Hope. Cape Town was basically founded in the middle of the 17th century by the Dutch, mostly traders who also settled in the area. And after the Napoleonic Wars, the area became part of the British Empire. Some Dutch colonists moved further away to, for example, the Oranje Free State. Here we also see African empires like the Sulu Empire. And by 1910, we have a South African Union. The 19th century, obviously, quite a difficult area. And for South Africa, that continued into the 20th century with the apartheid regime that ended in the early 90s. And since then, South Africa has been a liberal democracy where everyone has the right to vote and you can see that the area is one of the most important ones in Africa especially here the region around Johannesburg is 
economically the most important one on the continent. is here, globally important center, multifunctional. We also have Cape Town, Port Elizabeth, Durban, and here, the same area as Johannesburg, there's also Pretoria. Those are the five largest cities in the country. And just as a little side note, Port Elizabeth these days has a different official name that's not yet listed here. All right, so then much for our overview. Let's put the atlas aside and get to the maps. These are really, really detailed. The size is really impressive. We see here the western side of the country. And when we turn it over, in a moment, we're going to see the eastern side. South Africa has a population of about 60 million people and the fascinating part is that it has 11 official languages. It's based on the history. With Cape Town we already know that two of those languages are of European origin, namely English and Afrikaans which developed out of Dutch. And English is particularly common in the cities here, like in Cape Town, or here, Port Elizabeth. And this area is where you would often find Afrikaans. They are not the most common languages though. English probably is in terms of how many people also speak it as a second language and how often it's used in public discourse, in the media, um, for business relations. But the language that has the most native speakers is Zulu and the second most commonly spoken language is Osa. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. It's one of those languages with a click sound. Now, most languages in not just South Africa, but Southern Africa are Bantu languages. Some of them have click sounds, but they were borrowed from another set of languages, which are generally referred to as Khoisan languages. And they are also spoken here in this area up to Namibia. Those languages are not all related with one another, but they're usually referred to with sort of this umbrella term, Khoisan languages. And they have the widest range of consonants because of the click sounds that they employ. We can also see here on this map that this area actually looks relatively empty. Of course, we have these streets here, these connections all the way across. But this is quite a dry area and most of the population lives either down here 
or on the other side of the map, in the eastern side. We have the Atlantic Ocean here, which is very, very cold. And then we get to the Indian Ocean. And this area is called Garden Route. Sounds pretty scenic, doesn't it? There's a lot of tourism in the area, it's a great place to visit. The extended Garden Route goes from Cape Town all the way to Port Elizabeth. And there's plenty to do. You can go whale watching. There's a penguin colony. You can go shark cage diving. Right here is Africa's southernmost point. It says clay floral. There's boat based whale and dolphin safaris. An elephant sanctuary, monkey land and birds of Eden, the world's highest bungee jump, and of course plenty of umbrellas here that indicate beaches. That's not an umbrella. There we are. We also have a number of mountains here, which are the Cape Fold Mountains or the Cape Fold Belt. They are south of something called the Great Escarpment, which runs along here, all the way around. The interesting thing about South Africa is that most of it lies on a plateau, so relatively high up, and then it slopes down towards the coastlines, and here you have an additional set of mountains that developed at a different point in time. And in these mountains, you can see you also have a lot of winelands and warm water brook spas. It's another one, spa, wineland, an entire wine route. All the way up here, one after the other. You can get them pretty much everywhere. Uh, here in Austria, we have South African wines as well. All right, let's turn this over for a moment. So I think when you look here on the eastern side of South Africa, you notice immediately how much denser these roads are. So there's a lot more people living here in this area. You have a very different climate. Also, there in the south, the garden route that we just looked at, it's more Mediterranean rather than a dry desert. Since, of course, it's surrounded by water, the entire country has quite moderate temperatures. But 
rainfall varies very much across the different parts. So up here we have Johannesburg and Pretoria, which we mentioned earlier. And you might wonder what the capital of South Africa is. You might think it's Johannesburg or maybe Cape Town. But in fact, South Africa doesn't have one official capital. And even the seats of government are located in different cities. So while Parliament is in Cape Town, the administrative part of the government is here in Pretoria. That's where you would find the president. And then Johannesburg. You have part of the judicial branch, there's the constitutional court. And the idea was, in the 90s, to sort of diversify the whole country and make sure there's not just one place that takes the center, which is also why South Africa has so many official languages. And most of them can be found on this side of the country. They're usually regionally clustered, but don't necessarily correspond to the different regions like Eastern Cape or the Free State or KwaZulu Natal. Right here in the center, we have Lesotho, which is not part of South Africa. This is its own country that is surrounded on all sides by South Africa. And you can see the entrance points here. So it again is quite mountainous. The Great Escarpment runs along its eastern border. And if you look closely, you can see that it says right here, this is the highest point in Southern Africa. There's the Mafadi with 3,450 meters at its peak. And again in the area we have rock paintings. One, two, three. We also have a number of nature reserves. And also game reserves here, for example. Of course, the wildlife in South Africa is probably one of its most famous features. If we just briefly turn this over here. You have zebras, elephants, giraffes. And up here in this region, you can find the Kruger National Park, which you can visit. That one's quite famous, you've probably heard of it. This one is also a separate country, about the same size of Lesotho. It is listed here as Swaziland. But you will also often see it listed as Eswatini. And in the east we get to Mozambique, 
and in the north to Zimbabwe and Botswana. And like I said, this area here with Johannesburg and Pretoria is Oh, it's not the capital, but it's basically the center here in the area. The province is called Gauteng. And while it's one of the smaller provinces, a quarter of the population lives here, which of course is mainly due to the urban centers. Shall we move on to the next map and see what that one has to tell us? This one's a close-up map of Cape Town. And I think it's a little more geared towards tourists. You will see in a moment that we have quite a lot of information on this one. Again, it's pretty large. the Table Mountain, which is quite a famous spot. You can visit it to have a view over the entire city. And then further south, we have the Silver Mine Nature Reserve, the Table Mountain National Park, and the Cape of Good Hope Nature Reserve. And we get a lot of interesting information here if you're into um, sports holidays. Personally, I'm not, I have to admit, I prefer lying on the beach or uh, trying out the cuisine of a country. But you can see here, there's all kinds of information on where to go windsurfing, kite surfing climbing. There are all kinds of dive sites, hobby sailing, and of course you can also go nature watching. For example, penguins right here near Noah's Ark. And I really like how detailed this one is. We also have a shipwreck here, the Phoenix from 1829, the Diparama 1862, Bato 1806, Clan Stewart 1914, so a little more recent. And it's like that all the way around, also over here. There's 1968, 65, 42, mm -hmm. and so on. It's 
Fruity is also quite important, especially if you want to go out at sea. There are some general safety hints. If in doubt, don't go out. You should always let people know what you're planning to do and where you're going. You should take someone with you. Always check the weather forecast. And keep in mind that weather and wind in Cape Town can change very rapidly and the wind usually picks up in the afternoon. If you're doing a sea activity for the first time, you should go with someone who's more experienced and make sure to have refreshments, especially drinking water with you. As for the weather around Cape Town, already said that it can change very quickly and one day can be very different from the next. The Atlantic, I already mentioned that, can be icy cold while the temperatures in summer rise up to 30 degrees. The sea remains pretty icy, can drop to 8 degrees. And I particularly like this tip here, in summer beware of sunburn. Cape Town has a high sunburn index and follow these slip, slap, slop principles. Slip on a shirt, slap on a hat and slop on the sunblock. And finally, there's some information on sharks. There are sharks in the Cape waters and great whites do breed in False Bay, which is here on the eastern side of the peninsula. But getting bitten is a rare occurrence and usually if you take some precautions, you can avoid that altogether. Most attacks on people occur as a result of mistaken identity and they can be avoided. So for example, you shouldn't be in the water at dusk or dawn. Don't pee in the water, don't go in there with a bleeding wound and avoid water activities around seal breeding colonies as that's where the sharks go to feast. Here. We also have some information on trails if you prefer to stay on land. And it gives you an idea of how large the area is. There are three different trails that it suggests. One is three days long, one two days, and one six days. K points to VA waterfront. So for that you would start here on the southernmost tip, then go past Vasco da Gama Peak, Buffer's Fontaine Visitor Center, Paulsberg, Judas Peak, and then here's the end of day one. For day two, you go up to Svartskop. Siemensberg and here's Signal School. Day three takes you to the other side. So I'll go out across the Atlantic. And then you follow the coastline on day four. Back up towards the peaks. And then, this looks quite mountainous here. End of day four, silver mine. And then you hike part of the way back. 
for day five and from here from orange groove it's a little roundabout here to the end of day six this one's a bit confusing I have to admit we have another end of day six up here so it might just be two different routes one that ends here and one that leads you all the way to the northern part to the uh, VNA waterfront which would be in Cape Town so I guess you can take two different routes if you like okay so let's have a look at where that VNA waterfront is This would be this northern side. Here's Cape Town. Here's the Table Mountain. The Western Table, Central Table, and Eastern Table. Again, some information if you like to go climbing or paragliding. Or I would probably do something like this. It joined the tourists on a walking trail on top of Table Mountain. waterfront with the marina, Alfred Basin and Victoria Basin and then out here there's Tail Bay again you have plenty of information here from the city hospital, which hopefully you wouldn't need, to the Two Oceans Aquarium, the Art and Craft Market, the South Africa Maritime Museum, the National Sea Rescue Institute. So plenty of places to see. There's a tavern, cafe, Passes to the city stop here and out there are helicopter flights and there's a viewpoint if you like to watch out across the sea and here in the city center we have the Cape Town railway station and then of places to explore from the flower market to the tourism info there are the old townhouse the pan-african market the lutheran church here's saint stephen's here's a mall and there are all kinds of museums especially over here the South African National Art Gallery the Jewish Museum the Bertram House Museum here's a library planetarium, Lion Gateway and of course you also have the consulate and embassy so here's Italian, French, German 
Wales and Beacon, Netherlands, Indian High Commission, Swedish Embassy, and the American ones right here. Oh, and here's the Austrian one next to the Standard Bank Center. Again here that we have a legend. Anything in red is a point of interest. In green we have food service, markets, parks, monuments, and so on. I really like these two maps. I think they're really well made. Very detailed and beautiful to explore. But of course, visiting is a lot more exciting. For today, I hope you've learned a little bit about this beautiful country and maybe you too feel like going on a journey. So until next time, thank you for watching and sleep well.